have you ever thought, there must be more to this testing thing? Are you bored? Maybe you think, oh, automation must be the next thing, right? Hey, I'm Greg Pascal, and in this episode of Craft of Testing, I want to inspire you towards some exciting areas of testing you might not have considered. So let's jump on in. You know what? I've worked with countless test engineers, and I've observed that there's three kind of buckets that test engineers fall into. The first type is the tester that just does, you know, the minimum, just enough to get by. Um, they often have no interest in becoming better at what they do, and ironically, these testers are usually often the first ones that come up to management and say, hey, I'm too busy to do anything else and grow. Things like classes, books, blogs, coaching, anything, mentoring, really they just don't have time or place for that sort of stuff. Now there's a second group of testers, um, and these testers, they love doing a good job, and they're really liked by the team. Yet you see that they have a lot more potential. Um, these testers are in a place that being satisfied with the daily routine um, you know, is enough, but they're just this far from being uh, inspired that there's more right around the corner. There's also a third group of testers. These testers, they're hungry to learn. They're always asking, how can I be better? And how can my team get better? They can typically tell you about something new, a technique or something they're reading. Um, and they're always considering many aspects of quality. Have you ever considered all the different things used in testing. Now, I'm not just talking about software testing. The craft of testing has been around for a long time, longer than mobile phones, browsers, the internet, or even computers for that. I took a look at my garage today and I found all kinds of tools used in testing. It inspired me to ask, how does each of these tools translate into my work as a test engineer? So I'd like to share these with you now, and I, I want to help you have some new inspiration, of course, in the craft of testing. So let's jump on in and let's take a look. The first one is something like this. I bet you all have one of these. It's a simple tape measure. I mean, who doesn't have one of these lying around? As a kid, I'd go around measuring, you know, everything I could get my hands on, and I'd even turn this thing into a walkie-talkie every once in a while. You know, it's a simple tool. And of course, this device is used for measuring length. But when's the last time you considered the length or duration in your testing? What about does a web page, you know, have an optimal amount of length that you'd like it to load in? Is the main call to action require a lot of scrolling? How about a different from a different perspective? Like, does this app take a long time to download on a mobile device? And does the length of time to load the graphics and the videos seem really longer than most people would expect? A simple tape measure like this can remind us that we place value on determining the proper length and duration in things. It also lets us compare one item's length to another, something your customer will notice with the content and the products that you create for them. Now let's move on to our next, our next item I found. Yeah. You know what this is? It's a level. I don't know if you could see this little bubble in here, but this simple tool tells you whether a board or a bookshelf or a picture on the wall is level with the ground. As a test engineer, a level inspires me to ask, is this content uh, on the same level as the other content we've created? You know, are we writing for our target user or did we slip into too much technology speak? A level, it reminds me to look back on what we decided was true and gauge if we really met that objective. One of the unique tools I found in the garage is this little guy. It's a little wiring tester. I'm also into electronics and, and that sort of thing, so I had one of these. Now this little tool simply plugs into the wall and it tells us we have a wiring issue. It has some lights on the back here. And it'll basically, by illuminating these lights, tell me if I've got a wiring issue. So this wiring tester, it leads me to ask this sort of question. How about, is the navigation of my application wired up correctly? Do all these links go to the proper places on this website? Do the specific keywords, when I type them in a search engine like Google, 
uh, do they lead the user to the desired page uh, that we want to on the website? Now the last tool is one I'm positive all of you have. It's a simple flashlight. We all have these. It's a great tool and of course it's designed to see in dark places, exploring for trouble and shedding lights on, light on things, right? A flashlight, it inspires me to ask where could a bug or a defect really be hiding? I love this part of testing. Do you know how to view the source on a web page? And do you understand what's going on with it? Do you know the basics of things like HTML and CSS and JavaScript? When a new customer signs up for our newsletter, do they show up in our customer relationship management tool or, uh, or do they just disappear? Does executing an API result in a record being written to a database? By using my flashlight and thinking about what am I trying to expose as a defect, I think about where does this information go and I take a look in there to say, hey, is it in there? Is it where it should be? And most of us have tools like this laying around or others that might be in our garage or the kitchen junk drawer, right? Who has doesn't have one of those? Find inspiration from the things that are around you and translate them into areas you can expand your craft of testing. So decide today to find one everyday tool and ask yourself, how can I translate this into testing better starting today? So I'd like to hear from you. I know some of you probably take this lesson and you're going to find something interesting. I'd love to hear what that is. What tool inspired you to see your application different today? So until next time, this is Greg Pascal, encouraging you to pursue the craft of testing. Bye for now. I would love to connect with you, so feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm very easy to find at Greg Pascal on LinkedIn. For those of you who are in the automation world, take a look at my book, Test Automation in the Real World. You can find more about that at realworldtestautomation.com.